black magic, the strong black magic. There's weak things out there, there's strong things out there. And it, it depends on what's coming in contact. Now, the number one rule is, number one rule is that jinns or the, you know, the, the, whatever Allah has created in terms of the, the world of jinns, they're not supposed to cross over into our world. That's one rule Allah has given them. And it's in the Quran. It's in the Quran where Allah has, would question them. Allah will question them on the Day of Judgment to the jinns, those of them that have made, you know, crossed that barrier. They're not supposed to cross that barrier. So if you look in Surah, surah number 6, verse number 1 to 8, you will, you will find Allah will say, Ya ma'ashara jinni qad istaksartum min al-ins O population of jinns, you have become much more than the population of, of the, the humankind. And this is, this is just one part of the Qur'an. You will find another one in the 23rd Juz where Allah talks about their interference with, with uh, mankind. In Surah As-Safat, إِنَّكُمْ تَأْتُونَنَا عَنِ الْيَمِينِ You used to come from the, from the right-hand side. This is 28, verse number 28, Surah As-Safat. In Surah Baqarah, Allah talks about Masu Shaitan. What the actual Shaitan can do is that he can start putting, you know, he can start influencing or having an effect on the human being. And that has been explained in Surah Baqarah, verse number 275. How Shaitan sort of influences the mind of the human being and they can basically take over the mind. Now, number one rule is that they're not supposed to cross that barrier. Number two is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has created them, He has given them the Qur'an as a guidance. And we know that from many parts of the Holy Qur'an where Allah even addresses them. In Surah Al-Rahman, Allah has said, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تكذبان. Which one of your lords or your sustainers um, gifts are you denying? And He addresses two people by it. One or two, two beings by it. One is the human beings and one is the jinns. Allah addresses that. So we know that the Quran has, has come from them. There is also Surah Al-Jinn where we have a whole background of how the jinns came and met with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the jinns, let me just quickly talk about jinns and then we'll come across them sort of crossing that barrier or us crossing that barrier or something. We'll, we'll talk about it. Let's just talk about the nature of jinns. The word jinn in Arabic comes from a root word jim nu nu, which means something that is hidden. So anything that will have jim nu nu will be to do with a, a hidden element. So you've got, for example, Jannah. Jannah. Jannah is hidden from the eye. No eye has seen Jannah. That's why it's called Jannah. It's called jim nu nu there. You got uh, junoon. Junoon is madness. Now when a person is mad, you don't see their madness. So it's hidden within their own mind. So therefore it's got again, jim nu nu within that. And anything that has that, you will find that um, it has that um, element of, of hiddenness in it. Now, Allah has given many different um, ayats regarding, regarding that hiddenness. And in one of them in Surah Al-A'raf, which is the um, seventh surah of the Holy Quran, verse number 27, Allah said, Innahu yaraakum huwa wa qabiluhu min haythu la tarawnahum. They see you in a way that you do not see them. So what, what Allah has, has given as a, as a set rule is that we're both going to exist in this world, coexist in this world, but they're going to be able to see us and themselves. But we don't see them. Now the jinns, though they see us, they don't see the angels. Jinns don't see the angels and they don't see the angelic world. The angelic world has been created from light. The jinns have been created from fire. And again, there are several ayats in the Quran to talk about the fact that they've been created from fire. Our essence comes from clay, from water and from other elements. We've got a heavy material side to us they've got a very light side to them. The essence is that they are, since they are of fire, you know, fire rises. 
Okay, fire rise or heat rises. So jinns and them being sort of non-tangible, they're able to fly, they're able to move around much more easily than ourselves. Now one particular incident is in Surah uh, number, uh, where, where Suleiman alayhi salam, he asks, he asks who is going to bring the um, arsh or the throne of Bilqis. So there's an interesting part there because there's, there's two different uh, beings that stand up. One is the actual jinn and one is the one who's been given the knowledge. And they say, according to Tafasir, they say that the one who's been given knowledge, some have said that is Jibreel, but others have said that it's actually another jinn that is stronger than this one. So if you look in Surah number 27, verse number 39 and, 30, uh, and 40, you will find, Qala ifritum min al jinn. And Ifrit, Allah has given that name from the jinns, said, I will bring it to you, I will bring Bilqis. Now Bilqis again is controlling a whole world of jinns and she's a jinn herself. And he says, I will bring you her throne to you and before you can even stand up in your place. I'm strong and I'm also, you know, I've got trust. And then the one who had the knowledge of the book said, he stood up and said, I can bring it to you before you, you can blink your next eye. And before he blinked, he saw the, the throne of Bilqis in front of him. And that was the power. Now, they can move some of them. Now again, it's to do with the power that Allah has given because some of them are weaker than others. Some of them are weaker than others. So some of them uh, can't move so fast. But some of them, uh, but others can actually move, move fast. Some of them are more powerful than others. It's very clear from this part of the tafsir of the Quran that there's a strength amongst them that whether you know, some of them have more power than, than, than others. Now, interestingly, Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was given you know, the power over jinns. He was the only human being that had the authority given by Allah to control jinns. And Allah has given reference in the Holy Quran about that in Surah Al Naml again, where um, Allah says, "Wahushir ali Sulaiman junuduhu min al jinni wal insir wa taidi fahum yuzaun." Surah Al Naml, verse number, verse number 17 of Surah 27, that for Al for Sulaiman, the jinns were gathered, the men were gathered, and the birds were also gathered. Uh, this is specifically his, his uh, power that Allah had given him that he could have that influence on them. And what he would do is that he would ask them to build monuments for him. Uh, and if they didn't build monuments for him, he would, he would uh, cage them up. And he would also ask them to dive into the oceans and bring out for him certain precious stones out from the depths of the, of the ocean. So some of them he had them building, some of them he had them in cages, and some of them he had them, um, um, you know, diving into the oceans. And this is in the Quran, in Surah Saad, 38th Surah, Allah says, فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الْرِيحِ I gave Sulaiman the power of the, the, the winds. تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أصاب. Gently it will be able to take him wherever he wanted, and, and whatever it, it would it reach to. وَالشَّيَاطِينَ كُلَّ بَنَّاءٍ وَغَوَّاسٍ Allah has created certain shayateen or devils that Allah says they were, they were, they were, they, they were masons for him, for him, so they used to build. غواص, they used to dive well into the oceans. آخَرِينَ مُقَرَّرِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ There were others whom he had chained up because they wouldn't listen to him. So he had that power. And they used to work very tirelessly for him. Very tirelessly for him because Allah had given him the power over the jinns. He could order any jinn at any moment to be in front of him and he could send other jinns to go and capture them and bring them to him. And they were working, working tirelessly. And there's one interesting part that I want to quote here because it relates to some people's belief regarding the jinns. In Surah Saba, which is the 34th Surah of the Quran, Verse number 14, Allah says, فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتِ مَا دَلَّهُمْ عَلَىٰ مَوْتِهِ إِلَّا دَابَّةُ الْأَرْضِ تَأْكُلُ مِنْ سَأَةً Now the jinns were, were working for him. They were making many things for him. They were making monuments for him. They were making even large pots for him. 
They were making features and architectural pieces for him. This is all in uh, verse number 13 that Suleiman salam was making through the jinns. And then what happened is that he had a glass chamber and he was standing in the glass chamber with a stick that he was resting upon with his chin. And the jinns, uh, what he was doing is he was standing in Qiyam. He was standing in, in, in sort of prayer or salah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he actually died. So Sallam's death is actually while he's standing with that stick under his chin. He's resting with that stick, just resting under his chin. And he actually died in that position. But the jinns were still tirelessly working around him because they knew that Suleiman, though he's praying in there, he could just open his eyes and if he saw them not working, they'll be chained up. So they're working, working, working tirelessly. And they say that they were working, according to Tafasir, they say that it took six months for a small insect to bite through that stick that Suleiman was resting until finally the stick snapped and Suleiman fell down. And the Quran says, Falamma kharra, when he fell down, tabayyanatil jinn, the jinns found, now realized, muhin. If they knew the world of the unseen, they wouldn't have remained in this punishful state that Suleiman had put them in. They wouldn't have remained in that, that clear punishment. Now, um, or, or, or that disgraceful punishment. Now that is very clear here that jinns don't know the unseen world. Now there are people who will try and capture jinns or to try and see if they can talk to a jinn who's trapped in a human being and see if they can get to know the unseen world. It's haram. Why? Because the jinns don't know the unseen world and if a jinn is telling you about the unseen world then he's giving you googly doo. <laughs> He's giving you stories, jackanories, right? And what happened is that the jinns used to, from a very old time, since they, because they've been here before us. They've been here before us. And they were here when the jinns were residing on the earth and there was no humans on the earth. Adam salam, got created after the, the creation of jinns. Jinns had a lot of bloodshed because don't forget, please, they, they, are an, they, are, they are a nation or they are a group of beings Allah has created. They have everything similar to us. Everything similar to us. They, they eat, they sleep, they have homes, okay? They have conversations with one another, just like we have. They have language amongst themselves. They have castes. They have religions. They have um, bartering things that they barter with and they trade with. They have um, challenges with one another. They have troubles and they have arguments with one another. They could have fights and wars with one another. And when it gets to fighting with jinn and jinn, it can become very serious sometimes. In fact, it's ended up a lot of the times before Adam came to this earth, he ended up in death. Death of jinns, death of jinns. And in fact, when the messenger used to come amongst them from the jinns, this is all in Tafsir ibn Kathir, if you want to actually read up, uh, upon it about the jinns, if you want to look at the first Tafsir of Surah Baqarah where Adam mentioned, you will find a lot of this and you will find in other Tafsir as well. They were on this earth and they were causing a lot of mischief on the earth and when a messenger would come, they would kill that messenger. And that is when Iblis, at that time, he was a jinn. He was part of their world. And he, um, you know, ascended uh, high enough that he became part of the world of, of angels because of his good nature. He was a good being. And he started to worship Allah and worship Allah till, till he got through to the ranks of the angels, some of the highest angels. And he being a jinn, he wasn't an angel, he would be a jinn, you know, living amongst the ranks of the angels. In fact, there are certain weak hadiths to say that he even worshipped Allah in every single sky, every single heaven he worshipped Allah. And he got to so close that he then asked Allah to send with him a group of angels to go back to the earth and to banish these jinns and to kill as many as he could to try and curb the violence on the, on the earth. So Allah allowed that and he came, he did that and you know the jinns were now only a few in scarce places of the world. And that's when, when he came back up, Allah knew his intentions because Iblis was looking for his own little, um, you know, uh, a, a high rank. And he wanted to become, you know, Mr. Chief, yeah, or Mr. Chairman. 
you know, people fight over to, to get the chair, right? Guys, you're not listening here. People fight to get the chair, you know? To get a chair, they fight. To get in lead, in leadership, they fight. To get in charge of a place, they fight. To get in charge of any country, they fight. So Iblis was after this. And Allah knew his intentions, so he wanted to show this. And he created Adam salam, and then he told him to bow. And then here, Iblis refused because he knew the significance of this bowing. That bowing wasn't because of worship. That bowing was to accept the authority of Adam salam, over the jinns and over even the angels. Angels, angels are great, but we are in one way greater than them. Because angels don't have the ability to, to uh, go against the will of Allah. They, they can't disobey Allah. It's in their nature to always obey Allah. But we have. So when we choose you know, obedience over disobedience, that is a far greater, that is a far greater achievement than the angels who have no will to disobey God. Do you understand? That is why on the day of Arafah, there's a clear hadith in Muslim. Allah will boast to the angels and say, Oh angels, inna Allah yubahi bikumul malaika. Allah boasts to the angels and He says, Oh my angels, look at my servants on the day of Arafah who have come to me with tatty hair and dusty clothes disheveled to me. Look at them. Allah boasts to them because of the fact that we can disobey but we choose to obey. And that's a higher rank. So Iblis saw this and he didn't bow and therefore, you know, we know the clash that happened, you know, uh, he asked for extra time, he got that. And then he said, لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ He said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let this human being and all his progeny off. I want to take as many of them as I can to hellfire with me. And he said, I'm going to come in front of them, I want to come behind them, I want to come from the right side, I'm going to come from the left side. You will not find most of them to be you know, uh, thankful to you. Now there's a key thing here that Allah said, and this is that key for our protection from them. He said, Iblis said, except for those of your servants that are going to be righteous, salihin. If there's righteousness, if there's good actions, then shaitan has less influence because your immune system is strong and he has less influence over, the, over mankind. Now, <clears throat> he has this, he has this uh, you know, time that he's going to stay on the earth and no other jinn has been given this time to stay on the earth forever, not, not, not until the day of judgment. No other jinn has been given that. Now, obviously, Iblis has his progeny. Iblis has his children. Iblis has his friends, and this is uh, clear from the Holy Quran in Surah Al Kahf. Surah Al Kahf, in the 15th juz of the Quran, uh, Surah number 18, verse number 50. Allah says, أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِن دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ Will you, O oh human beings, some of you human beings, take him and take his children? Allah says, Dhurriyata, his children, his progeny, his grandchildren, his grandchildren's grandchildren, and so on. He's got a whole race of things that are being, being created on this earth, and so have we. So Allah says, Will you take him and his family members as your allies, as your close ones besides me? While he is your enemy, will you do this? So this now, when, when Iblis came to the earth, now he's been looking for many ways to try and get the human beings to go to Jahannam. Now one of the ways is that he wants to influence the, the human being. To influence the human beings, he's got waswas, waswasa. That's been mentioned in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Nas, the last surah of the Holy Quran. Allah has even given the name of the type of, because there are many types of shayateen. Many types of shayateen. There is one is called, who's called Khannas. And that's the one that continuously whispers. And there's others, Rasulullah has given a name of the one who gives doubts. There's one particular shaitan that will give doubts. So when people have make wudu, some people get doubt. Did I wash this? Did I, did I, did, no, let me wash it again. So they wash it again. And then after that, they, did I wash that little part of my elbow? No, let me wash it again. So they wash it again. This is doubt. This is doubt. And if you see any person who's in that, the best way is to get somebody who looks over them. And tells them, just listen to me. Yes, you washed it. Now you just carry on. You washed it. Now just carry on. Finish it. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of some kind of disorder. If you don't get them out of it, they will literally spend an hour to do wudu. Or they could spend, you know, forget. They might do. You know, I've, I've seen serious cases 
where it gets to the stage where they've done wudu again and again and again and again and forget it, man, the bathroom looks like a little pool by now. You now there's water all over it. And then they think, you know, what's the point, man? Let me just jump in the bath. <laughs> Seriously. And then they jump in the bath and every time they want to have a wudu, they have, end up having a shower. And then they get waswasa in the shower. Oh my God, what's next now? You're going to dive into the ocean or something to make sure that you... You know, it gets really... It affects them quite badly. There are some people like a waswasa um, uh, specifically regarding their salah. So, you know, they get waswasa again. Did I read this? Oh, no, no. And they want to start again. And they want to start again. Again, it's a waswasa. You just got to... You know, sometimes you might... If you feel that it's happening to you, you just have to say to yourself, No, I did it. Finish. Khalas. I just did it. And just move on. Or you do it once and say, done, finished. And just move on. Do the next one. Don't allow it to continue. Because the continuity of you, if you start accepting it, then it's going to change into a kind of disorder. Now, one thing is waswasa. Next thing is, when he comes for waswasa into a house, because he comes to every single one of us. Okay? Jinns have been in every single body, right? Are you scared of jinns, guys? No, you know. You know why? Because jinns come in our bodies every single day. They do. Every single day jinns come. In fact, when you wake up for Fajr, you've got a jinn that's already tied, a shaitan that's already tied three knots over your, your, your head. Just, just over that part of your head, tied three knots. Every human being, especially the ones that want to wake up for Fajr. There's a specific group of shaitans that are just after making us miss Fajr Salah. 